Suppose I tell you that Scottish people never put ice in their whiskey. And you say, uh, my uncle's Scottish, he puts ice in his whiskey. And I say, well, no true Scotsman puts ice in his whiskey. See what I did there? I changed the parameters of my claim so I didn't have to admit that I was wrong. That's the no true Scotsman fallacy. It shifts criteria mid-argument in order to avoid a counterexample. Of course, this fallacy doesn't have to be about Scottish people. Imagine there's a terrorist attack and people are rushing to conclude something about the religion of the attacker. And I say, well, we don't know. It could be a Christian or... And you say, no, 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 no Christian would do that. Then the next day, a Christian actually confesses to the crime. And you say, well, no true Christian would do that. What you've done is to shift the goalpost. We were arguing about what Christians would do. Now suddenly it's true Christians, which you can define however you want. It makes your argument a moving target. Incidentally, this metaphor of moving the goalpost, people sometimes use to refer to those who are never satisfied with evidence, always demanding more. So let's say we're arguing about whether a particular politician is a liar, and I keep giving you more and more examples of lies they've told, but you say, well, that doesn't make them a liar exactly. At some point, you've rendered the evidence irrelevant. The no true Scotsman fallacy does that, but in a very specific way. It doesn't just ignore the evidence, it changes the subject so the evidence no longer applies. We were talking about, say, Scotsman. Now suddenly it's true Scotsman, whatever that means. I'm John Corvino, and this is Better Argument. It's bourbon. And I'm not even Scottish.